Today, five signs that you've reached inner union, not the least of which includes your twin flame reaching out. They're going to unblock you. They're going to stop rejecting you. They're going to want to be around you all of the sudden. And this could be after, like I said, they ghosted you, they blocked you, they rejected you, they said, no way, I'll never talk to you again. I just want to be friends. I never felt about you at all. I never gave a damn about you at all. And all of a sudden they want to talk to you, hold your hand, be close to you, go on a date, whatever, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, it happened to me, guys, and it happens to my students, my coaches, right? I'm the world's leading twin flame coach. 6,000 paying coaching students to date, and this keeps happening. And some might say that it's magic. It's not magic. It's technology. Twin flames is a legitimate phenomenon, and it can even be explained scientifically, and we'll get into a little bit of that. But first, let's do the signs. Number one, Samadhi. And I'll even give you a resource on what exactly that is. There's a free resource on YouTube. Samadhi, that's number one. Okay, number two, the numbness phase. What I call the numbness phase. It happens to all my students. It's maybe happened to some of you watching. Maybe some of you it has not. But if you apply the true twin flame teachings, it'll happen. And the next thing you know, your twin flame wants to talk to you again. It's just a temporary phase, the numbness phase. Number three, feeling like you're one with the external world. Like as in you're here, you're having an experience, and I feel like I'm that tree over there. I feel like I'm the buildings the sky, the mountains, and I don't know how to explain it. That one's going to take a minute, <laughs> but it's really cool. I'll explain it to you, and uh, I'll even give you an example that everybody can relate to so that when it happens to you, you're going to know. And I'll even tell you why it's happening. How about that? It's going to be an action-packed Twin Flame video today. I'm even going to cover the science like I often do. Okay. You haven't given your twin flame a thought in ages. You haven't given your twin flame a thought in ages. You haven't thought about them. You haven't even been focused on them. All right? Okay. Number five, what I call the weird energy shit. The weird energy shit, right? Like some metaphysical things going on. We're going to talk about that. And there's a reason why that's happening, and we're going to talk about the reason, too. So, buckle up. Action-packed video today. Okay, so number one was Samadhi. Now, the best thing that I can do is to direct you to the online resource about it. And this is actually a documentary film that I have all of my students watch, and I actually am telling you guys on YouTube all the time to watch it. If you're new here, maybe you haven't heard me mention this film before, but it's in lots of other videos. And this is another one of those videos. The name of the documentary is called Samadhi. S-A-M-A-D-H-I. Samadhi. S-A-M-A-D-H-I. It's on YouTube. It's free. The whole thing, it's an hour long. There's three parts, right? So make sure that you don't skip around. Don't start watching part two or part three, or else they won't really make sense to you. You got to start with part one. So Samadhi, and part one is called Samadhi, the Illusion of Maya, M-A-Y-A. The illusion of Maya, which is an ancient Zen spiritual term for like ego, the separate self. And why that's important is going to make a lot of sense to you by the time I'm done with you today, guys. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom today, right? Samadhi. Go check it out. Watch it tonight. It'll change your life. You're going to watch that film and you're going to be like, I get it, and I can't explain why. 
<laughs> and there's a reason that you can't explain why. Because what it is, samadhi, is not conceptual. And I'm going to be talking a lot about that in this video today, not the least of which is going to include number three, which is the feeling like you are one with the external world, like you are all the things. This background, the trees, the everything, the oneness. And you've probably heard about this in the, from the spiritual world, from spiritual teachers. You, you kind of hear that description. I feel like I'm at one with everything. And it's a thing, guys, and you can't conceptually explain it with your mind. So go check that film out, Samadhi. Watch it tonight. It'll provide such a breakthrough. You will advance light years on your ascension path, which is all this really is. This is your spiritual ascension. Okay, number two, a thing that I call the numbness phase. And some of you that caught one of my recent uploads about the Twin Flame stages. Um, I've done a few videos about the Twin Flame stages, and I always point out that ultimately there's no Twin Flame stages because if you make a game out of getting through stages, that's the mind, that's the ego. It likes outcomes. It wants to get somewhere. I need to advance through the stages. And all you're doing is creating an identity out of this whole twin flame thing. And that's one of the worst things you can do. But in my recent twin flame stages video, if you look at the date of this video, just go back in time, a couple of weeks, one to three weeks. I don't remember exactly when it was. And um, I talked about how you do go through energetic changes as you are transcending the ego personality. Notice the words, notice the language that I'm using. For example, transcending. You guys ever heard of transcendentalism? Of course you have, of course you have. The twin flame journey is really just the true spiritual journey. This is the true twin flame teaching. We know exactly what twin flames are. We know exactly what the soul is. So as you are transcending the duality-based systems, and I'll explain what that is later, of the ego personality, they call it separation consciousness. Separation, sound familiar? And that's not twin flame terminology. Hmm, you mean this is a known thing? You mean somebody already figured this out like 10,000 years ago, Kurt, and you're just going to tell me the actual teachings that somebody's been teaching for thousands of years? Yes. And I'm really serious about that. And I'm even going to give you another video to watch about that word separation. Anyway, as you transcend the separation consciousness of ego personality, the separate self, you enter unity consciousness, union. And as you do that, at one point, it's kind of like you're crossing this threshold, this point of no return. It's like an initiation. If you don't ever experience the numbness phase, you'll just go through the same cycles forever and ever and ever with you and your twin flame, the running and chasing, the obsessing over them. But once you detox from the addictive energy with the physical person and commit to transcending the mind, which is really just remembering who you really are, this is all gonna make sense, keep watching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect all the pieces together Okay, you are a soul. This is a remembrance. Once you do that, you go through this strange buffer zone where you're leaving behind identification as the egoic mind, the separate self, separation, right? It's always been called that. 
Eckhart Tolle, Rupert Spira, Ram Das, you name it. They all call it the separate self. This is ancient Zen spiritualism. That's where that word came from. Your twin flame is your soul. They are your spirit. Everybody knows that. There's a lot of differing opinions about twin flames on the internet. But the one thing everybody agrees on, and I mean everybody, when it comes to twin flames, is that it's one soul in two bodies. Right? Your twin flame is your soul. You are simultaneous incarnations of the same soul. Oh, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, my friends. I'm just setting the stage right now. So, the numbness phase, is it's like crossing this zero point where for a temporary amount of time, and for me it was about two days, I had a student once tell me it took them about a week. It usually doesn't last for very long, but it's nothing bad. It, it, it doesn't hurt or anything like that. Um, you don't feel anything. <laughs> you don't feel anything. Nothing. And I don't know how else to describe it other than to say I felt like I was not part of this physical world anymore. I remember getting off the train. I used to work in downtown, uh, downtown Denver, you know, with I worked in like a 30-story skyscraper, you know, and I took the light rail train into work every day. And I got off the train and I'm walking down the street to my building and it's like 7 and 7.30 in the morning and there were these construction worker guys and they had a jackhammer. It's fucking 7 in the morning and you're there with a jackhammer. <laughs> well, I don't know. You're in the middle of the metropolitan district. So I guess whatever. But still, ordinarily... I would have been like that. I would have been like, oh my God, you insufferable. Urgh. I know you guys have work to do, but God damn it, seven in the morning. I haven't even had my coffee yet. Come on. Right? No. Nope. None of that shit. I was so detached from the physical experience and the sound and the noise and all that. It, I felt nothing. Nothing. I just felt... Like, I wasn't part of this world. It was the coolest shit ever! In hindsight, at the time, it wasn't cool. It wasn't anything. You're just completely... You haven't switched your mood. You've switched your mode. Fucking write that down. <laughs> That's what it's like, I because normally, because the mind is duality. So, the mind, yin, yang, right? Alpha, omega, yin, yang. So, this is kind of the other big, like, spiritual teaching that you maybe have heard of. There's, there's the one where it's, I feel like I'm at one with everything. And then there's the yin and yang. And you're like, what are they talking about? Well, yin and yang is just, it's just duality. It's explaining duality, okay? Everything in the universe works on a system of duality. Albert Einstein called it relativity. Things being relative to each other. You have plus, minus, hot, cold, up, down, here, there, good, bad, me, you. Um, I like it, I don't like it. I agree, I disagree. It's correct, it's incorrect. Duality, the mind, concept. Yin and yang, duality, emotion, I feel good, I feel bad, right? Physics, positive proton, negative electron, here, there, higher energy, lower energy, higher density, lower density, etc., etc., duality, right? Relativity, okay. And I even, I even had a psychologist go, yeah, and just in passing, he, he said, yeah, and because the mind is duality, blah, 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 and he was an atheist, and he just kind of, you know, it was just part of the conversation. Yeah, the mind is duality, and so blah, blah, blah. You know, that was just like, I noticed he did that at one point, right, when we were talking. So, you're not changing your mood. You're not feeling good or bad. 
you're like at the zero point and it's like you're exiting the whole entire scale. Listen to that again. There's feel good, feel bad. And in the middle is the zero neutral point. And you're not even, it's not apathy. That's not what I'm talking about. You're actually punching out of the scale completely. The scale of duality, plus minus, feel good, feel bad. It's a sliding scale and you're like punching out of it. You're not changing your mood from good to bad. You're changing your mode from thought, emotion, duality, the mind. Remember, body, mind, soul. So I'm talking about how the mind works. Again, thousands of years old ancient Zen spiritual teaching. Even psychology recognizes it. Body, mind, soul, back to basics. Your twin flame, it's just spiritualism 101. No healing, no clearing karma, no fixing your inner child, no balancing your inner feminine and masculine, no twin flame mission, none of the new agey stuff. You got to get rid of that stuff. I'm not saying those things are bad. That's just not what this is. This is just basic spiritualism, consciousness. Okay, so I'm just teaching you basic spiritualism. That's really all I'm doing. That's all your twin flame is trying to teach you. Your soul. Remember, your twin flame is your soul. Your soul is trying to wake you up. So instead of shifting your mood, you're just leaving behind that whole system of duality. You're shifting your mode, not your mood. What am I shifting into? Consciousness. Unity consciousness. You're leaving behind separation consciousness, the ego mind. It's separation consciousness. I'm here. You're over there. I am me. You are my twin flame. And so that makes a we. I'm here. The tree is over there. The mountain is over there. The buildings are over there. The sky, everything. I am separate from everything else. There's me and there's everything else. There's me and there's that person, my twin flame, this other person, blah, blah, blah. And that makes a we. We. We are separate. Us. Your twin flame. It's a they. It's a them. And the mind is only capable of recognizing separate forms. It's not defective because it does that. The ego mind, the personality, the thought-based form of identity, the history, the story you tell yourself about who you are, the history, the memories, mental, emotional memories, It's called separation consciousness. Again, Eckhart, Rupert, Ram Das, Buddha, Jesus, all of them. They call it the separate self. Separation. I even made a video about this. Go check it out. It's on my True Twin Flame Teachings playlist. On this YouTube channel. It's free, guys. From the world's number one twin flame coach. 6,000 paying coaching students. They paid me to coach them. 6,000. I've done this lots of times, guys. I've helped a lot of people achieve union. And it starts with inner union. Go check them out. They're free, for goodness sake. Again, it's on the playlists section of this YouTube channel. It's called The True Twin Flame Teachings. Go check it out. Now, there's a video on there called Twin Flames, Separation Consciousness, Unity Consciousness, and Detaching. Why do we use those words in the so-called twin flame community? Why does it have to be separation or union? Why not just say, they broke up with me, they're talking to somebody else? Or, or union, oh, we're together. Oh, they came back. Or we're dating. They're my boyfriend now. Or, right? Why does it have to be those words? And what's up with detaching? Where did those words come from? They're not twin flame words. They are spiritual words from the ancient Zen traditions. Go watch my video about it. Right now, when you realize where those words really came from, which is kind of what this video was about too, that's when you go, oh, now I know what to do about my twin flame. You don't need to do anything about the person, it turns out. It's all in here, guys. You transcend the ego mind. 
And I've been talking about this for a long time. Long time, guys. Okay, so that's the numbness phase. Leaving behind the separation consciousness system of the egoic mind, the personality, the little me, not the true I, which is the consciousness. We're going to talk about that next, right? Remember, body, mind, soul. Don't make this complicated. All you need to do is understand how these three things work. And the body, we're pretty clear, right? There's lots of info about the body, right? Interesting. Physical reality works on duality too, right? Okay. The mind duality, we just talked about that at length, separation consciousness. Because the mind is duality, there's me and there's other, and that makes a we. We are separate. And again, it's not defective, the ego mind, because it does that, right? That's what it's for. That's what it was designed for. But it's not really you. You're not the thinker. You, you watching, you do not think. You are that which observes the thinker. And when you remember this, it's energetic and you cannot think your way there. You cannot understand how to do remembering who you really are. There's thoughts and feelings going on. Watch this. There's thoughts and feelings going on. Have you ever said, why am I thinking that? Why do I feel this way? You ever said that to yourself? Or the obsessive thinking with your twin flame? Dead giveaway, by the way. You know, the fucking obsessive thinking. A million fucking miles an hour. You can't fucking stop thinking about them. Jesus. <laughs> it's like it's happening to you. The obsessive thinking. You can't turn it off. It's fucking weird. Now, there's a metaphysical reason for that. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. The, the ego death, the dark night of the soul, right? The breaking down of the egoic mind. Like the construction workers with the jackhammer, breaking up the ego, and then it's going to get washed away. Why? Because consciousness is emerging. Now, there's thinking and feeling going on, emotions, and you notice, why am I thinking so fucking much, right? Did you ever notice that you are that which notices? Think about it. No pun intended. Did you notice that you are the noticer? You are consciousness. What is that? How is it that there is me as awareness and there's thinking and feeling going on? Yeah, very interesting. What is consciousness? What do you think it is? No pun intended. It's the soul, body, mind, soul. The mind, thought, emotion, metaphysical energy, concepts. It works on duality, yin, yang. The soul, non-duality, not separation consciousness, unity consciousness. And it's pure consciousness. They call the egoic mind separation consciousness, but it's just a figure of speech because really what it is is a matrix of consciousness that's called thought. But the soul is not a matrix. It's pure being. It's a singularity. It's non-duality. It does not extend outward. It doesn't move outward. You use the mind to focus consciousness outward, yes, but what is the raw focus itself? What is that? Pure consciousness. People who embrace transcendental meditation, for example, whenever you have like a really deep one, and I've had them, a really powerful meditation, when they come out of it, they report a feeling of going inward infinitely, going in and in and in and in. So it's like space curving in on itself. And even in physics, they have a word for that. They call it a black hole. The source of a black hole at the center is called a singularity. Single, non-dual, non-duality. And also in physics, 
A singularity is what occurs when relativity breaks down, duality breaks down. Not even concept can function. They don't even have a number to represent a singularity. Did you know that there's different kinds of numbers? There's I don't know how I don't remember how many. I I I've watched um instructional videos about real numbers and I don't remember how many there are offhand, but it's something like 8 or 12. So you know how there's different kinds of math <clears throat> like conventional math and then you got algebra, trigonometry, geometry, calculus, right? Statistics, right? Well, within each kind of math is the possibility to have different kinds of numbers. There's not just positive and negative numbers. There's imaginary numbers, there's which that's kind of a bad name because they're not really imaginary. Somebody just decided to call it that. But there's there's like 8 or 9 or 10 or so different types of numbers. Okay. In physics, when you're writing out where did the universe come from mathematically, you, you reach a point where you don't even have a number that you could use to represent a singularity, the source. The source? There's another terminology. Hmm, interesting. How science and spiritualism seem to intersect, indeed. So, you couldn't even write the number one. You couldn't even write the number zero. You can't even do that. To represent it right so concept itself completely ceases to exist that's the soul it's the experiencer it's awareness it's consciousness and all we can say about it is that it is me but it's not form it has no form in fact Technically, if you want to know a little secret, to even say that there is an it, like what is it? Consciousness, what is it? Right. To even say that there is an it for you to talk about, you're already doing it wrong. There's no it. There's no, there's no consciousness, but there is. It's the great mystery, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole today. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, well, anyway, guys. So, bridging the gap between the numbness phase explanation and feeling you are, you are one with the external. You do not think your way there. You cannot understand how to do that. It's energetic. It's not thought. It's not concept. Okay? It's being. It's spiritual. It's deeper than thought. That's why healing and coming up with some fucking mission I got to do and twin flames are going to save the world and there's only 144,000 and clearing my karma and clearing my chakras and all that stuff is a bunch of gobbledygook that keeps you focused on the physical person externally, which is the mind, ego, which is why they run because it's separation consciousness. I got to do something about them. I'm not even saying healing is bad. That's just not what this is. And by the way, as far as healing is concerned, that very well could happen as a natural and organic process, a byproduct of you transcending the egoic mind. Which brings me officially now to number three, feeling like you are, like you are, one with the external world like you i don't know how else to explain it again an explanation is a thought a concept it's this weird eerie knowing you just sense it and i'll explain how you can tell in just a second but first just to remind you you know you feel like i'm that car on the mountains i'm the trees i'm the sky on the buildings and the mind is going, how do I know that? Why do I feel this way? Am I crazy? Blah, 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 right? Okay. Here's what's going on. There's two streams of information. 
One is the soul, one is the mind. The soul is giving you the knowing that you're connected to everything, that you are one with everything. Unity consciousness. Union. Hmm. And you may even feel that way about your twin flame. You're just going to know that you are one with them or that they are your twin flame. You're just going to know it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that's one information stream. That's the soul. Remember, body, mind, soul. Keep it simple, guys. Okay. The other information stream is the mind. How do I know this is real? This can't be true. I, I blah, blah, blah. This, uh, am I crazy? Blah, 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 blah. Those are all thoughts, guys. So you got two things going on because they're coming from two places. Well, okay, what do I do? Nothing other than to ignore the information stream coming from the mind. Remember, the mind is duality. So it can be correct or it can be incorrect, the mind. But the soul, the knowing, they call it intuition. It's non-duality. It's not duality. It's singularity. So it can only be truth. And by the way, what does this knowing feel like? How are you going to know when you experience it? I'll even tell you that. I got a great explanation for that. Here it goes. And by the way, if you think the things I'm talking about in this video are good, where do you see what's in my introduction to the journey for Twin Flames? The true Twin Flame teachings. I'm just saying. So, everybody has experienced deja vu, right? And by the way, the introduction to the journey is available on my website, newworldallstar.com. The introduction to the journey, right? If you think the free stuff that I'm giving you here in this video is good, where do you see the paid content? And it's not expensive, guys. I even have payment plans. It's very affordable. Anyway, deja vu. Everybody's had it, right? That's what intuition feels like. And what I mean by that is what it feels like. And it's not an emotional feeling. I'm not talking about emotions. It's this weird feeling in your body. It feels a certain way, but it's not emotional. And you're clear that it's not emotional. It's information that you experience. And deja vu is basically just your soul telling you where that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Because deja vu is this weird, eerie knowing that I've done this before. It's this weird, eerie knowing that I've done this before. Right, because you have. Your soul is telling you, hey, you're where you're supposed to be. Good job, right? But it's information. And the mind is what goes, wait, I feel like I've done this before, but how do I know I've done this before? You think that it's you who is saying that. You're not your mind. You are the conscious observer of the mind. That knee-jerk reaction of the mind to just question, oh, how do I feel like I know I've done this before? Have I? Oh, let me think. Uh. Right. That's the mind. That's one information stream. It's asking questions. And you forgot who you were. You believe you are the personality, the separate self. So you think that it's you who's questioning the soul, which is the real you. The knowing. See how that works? There's two things going on because they're coming from two places. So what do you do? Ignore the thinker. Remember who you are, that you're not the thinker. You are not that which asks questions. You are not your mind. I'm not saying the mind is bad. That's just not who you are. Mind has a purpose. But the mind is never going to be able to understand intuition or deja vu. It cannot because it's duality. That's not what it's for. That's not its job. Its job is thinking. <laughs> Knowing is something else. Intuition is information that you experience. Listen to that again. Intuition is information that you experience. And what it 
feels like is just like deja vu. That's like the most distilled explanation you'll ever get on intuition. How would I know if I was experiencing intuition? What is it? And what do I do about it? Well, you don't do anything about it other than to just ignore the mind and its stupid questions. <laughs> and they're not always stupid. The mind is the mind is a, is a magnificent instrument. Don't get me wrong. But it's when we believe we are the mind that we run into trouble. And again, this is ancient Zen spiritualism. Buddha, Jesus, the Dalai Lama, Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das, Michael Singer, Paramahansa Yogananda, Hare Krishna, Krishnamurti, um, Charlotte Jocko Beck, John Cabot Zinn, Wayne Dyer, Alan Watts, on and on. An ancient Zen spiritualism, non-duality. Rupert Spira, you want to get your twin flame? You want him to come back? Go check out the teachers on my YouTube channel. Go to the channels menu. There's a bunch of free shit on my YouTube channel, guys. Use it. Or go sign up for my paid coaching. It's not that much money. And you can talk to us. I got a whole team of people helping me out. But Rupert Spira is on my channels menu. Ancient Zen spiritual teachers teaching you non-duality. Anna Brown, Eckhart Tolle, John Butler. Go check them out. And if you like the science-y stuff, there's another channel on there called Closer to Truth. Um, and you're going to get a taste of the fact that, no, it is not true that the scientific community finds it laughable that science and spiritualism intersect. No, no, they do not think that is true. No, there is not that consensus. consensus. Probably half of the scientific community thinks that there is a place where science and spirituality intersect and you can see big shot physicists, big names on that channel, Closer to Truth. Go check it out. And then for those of you that are interested in the law of attraction, there's Abraham Hicks. Okay, so that's the feeling like you are one with everything, and it feels like that. It's information that you experience. It's a knowing, and it feels like deja vu. feels just like it. Same feeling, different information. Deja vu, I've done this before. Intuition is information about the future or information about another person or information about something that's true for you, right? Intuition, deja vu, but they're basically, they're the same thing. Okay, number four, you haven't given your twin flame a thought in ages. You haven't given your twin flame a thought in ages. You haven't given your twin flame a... Th now, well, how can that be? Well, because you are remembering who you are. So, watch this. Earlier in the video, I used a figure of speech, which is not totally incorrect, I suppose. Depends on how you look at it. But I said, you're going to leave behind separation consciousness and enter unity consciousness. You're going to transcend the egoic mind and enter unity consciousness. Union, unity consciousness. Okay, inner union. That's what that is, unity consciousness. Again, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We already know exactly what this is. Unity consciousness is something that has been taught for thousands of years, and it doesn't have anything to do with twin flames. And you don't need to do anything about your twin flame. You need to go in here and enter unity consciousness, and your twin flame will come back so fast, it'll make your freaking head spin. That's inner union. Unity consciousness. Now, when you do that, you are detaching from the ego. And it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer to you. And I mean the real you. Not the story. Not the narrative. Not the little me. Not the retained thought and emotional patterns that you've been accumulating since you were a child. The memories, the emotions, the experiences, the I am this, I am that, I'm a mom, I'm a brother, I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher, I'm a lawyer, I'm a bus driver, I'm a whatever, I'm a YouTuber, whatever, right? Your identity. I've been to these places, I've done these things, I'm liberal, I'm conservative, I'm whatever. None of that. But instead, your experience becomes where 
you're here and you see the storyteller ego, the separate self over there going, me, 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 me. And that's the best way I can explain it. You have energetically detached from the ego and you no longer derive your basic sense of self from the ego mind, the personality. And we're not saying that that's bad. And by the way, it's always going to kind of be there. And you'll even start to master the true purpose of the ego. And this is the part where you might even get into like the law of attraction and manifesting. And that's why I... I have a, uh, my manifesting course too, because it's kind of the next logical thing. I was like, well, this is kind of the next logical thing. So I started teaching the law of attraction professionally. Okay, so you haven't given them a thought in ages because you realize that you are not that which thinks about them. You are not your mind. You're the consciousness. You observe that which thinks about them. And you, you, you'll, you'll even sit there at times and you'd be like, like noticing when the mind starts to play some old story about you and your twin. And it just does that. It's just automatic. It just does that. Eventually it stops, right? But you'll be like, oh, I see you. You're up to your old tricks again, Mr. Mind. Okay. I even gave my ego a name, right? I, I tell my students, pick a name for your, your ego personality, the the. Uh, the, or the pain body, right? Eckhart Tolle, he calls it the pain body, the emotional component, right? It plays out different emotional narratives. And eventually that wheel starts to slow down. And it's about this time your twin flame starts blowing your phone up or you'll run into them. Some of my students, I tell them to block their twin. Straight block them so that you can do the detox, right? And then they run into them a few months later in the most serendipitous way possible. Very, very interesting. I've had twin flames meet halfway across the country in an airport. Hmm. Okay, number five, the weird energy shit. This is just your kundalini waking up. And kundalini is a term for an experience where you feel energy like surging through your body. And it, it feels very pleasant, actually. And this can go very slowly or it can go super fast. And when it goes super fast, you're like, whoa! It, and it, it, it shocks you, but it, it doesn't hurt. It feels kind of cool, actually. And uh, so if, if something like that happens to you and it hurts, go see a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Please seek professional medical advice first. But it usually feels good. Okay. Now mine was the kind where it was like gradual and slow and it happened over like three or four weeks. And I felt like this weird, like energy, like pulling at me all the time. And I felt like there was a big rubber band attached to my whole body, like pulling me into the sky sometimes. And I would feel that between me and my twin flame sometimes too. Really cool shit, man. And it's your astral body waking up. Remember body, mind, soul, the metaphysical astral body, the mind, is mental, emotional, and metaphysical. So telepathy, metaphysical energy, chakras, right? And consciousness, which is the soul, is the actual fuel source of the metaphysical component, the mind, the astral body. And because your consciousness is exploding right now, guess what happens? This thing starts to come online. Think of it like when your foot falls asleep and you get up and walk around and you feel the tingling. Except in this case, with the weird energy shit, it doesn't hurt. It's just like your, your, your mind, your metaphysical component, right? The mind, which is thoughts, emotions, and metaphysical energy chakras, right? It's coming online. It's waking up because of the increase in consciousness, the fuel of the mind, the metaphysical component, astral body, is consciousness. And the consciousness is exploding because this is your physical awakening. So that's all it is. And eventually that just kind of tapers off and then you're back to normal again. So there you go. There's the five signs that you've reached inner union. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you later.